What's up, YouTube? I'm back with part two of my Hawkeye slash Ronin Avengers Endgame build. Remember that you can get the pattern for this build on my Etsy shop. There'll be a link right here. You can also get the same pattern month to month on my Patreon account, so be sure to check that out. And hey, if you want to help support the channel even more, there's links to shirts below this video that you can... wear. I have pictures of this one sixth scale Hawkeye figure for my references. It's a pretty amazing figure, so be sure to use these pictures if you can. As always, this video is sponsored by Lonsdale Leather, so be sure to check them out if you need any leather or supplies. I'm using a six to seven ounce vegetable tan leather for this project. Vegetable tan is the leather you need to use if you're gonna carve it. If I was to do this again, then these would be a little heavier, maybe a 10 ounce. I thought the greaves were perfect at six to seven ounce, but the knees could have used a little more bulk. There's a fair bit of leather carving in this project, so be ready for that. It's not too complicated, but there is a lot of it. So I show you the proper technique on how to carve it and a cheating technique on how to carve it a little faster. Remember that both the Ronin and Hawkeye costumes from Avengers Endgame have the same greaves and knees, or at least that's what the uh, one-sixth scale miniatures would have you believe. So take a look at those, and they're the same. There's some upper body changes, and obviously there's a cowl and mask for Ronin. And that means you have the greaves and knees for two different costumes, which is pretty awesome. As far as leather carving goes, we're going to wet the leather and let it sit for a bit. You want the core to be wet, the top to be drier, so... I wet everything multiple times during the process. I come back to it and wet it again, depending on how I think it's feeling. Um, you you just get used to it. You, when I put it to my cheek or my hand, I want it to feel cool to the touch, but not wet. The first thing we need to do is transfer our pattern onto the leather. We're gonna use a stylus and this tracing film. It doesn't have to be perfect, just light so you know where the lines are. Um, don't worry if you pick up your tracing film and it looks like a bit of a mess. It will all mostly disappear once you hit it with a swivel knife and bevel it. So every part on this project has a little bit of leather carving, some more complicated than others. You can see this back piece just has a few lines. The front's got some more lines and then the knees got lots of lines. The pattern pack on my Etsy shop will include all three of the current videos that I'm doing for this series. Uh, part three may not be out yet, but the pattern for it will be in the pack, so you can preemptively grab it if you want. Now that we've got all of our lines traced, it's time to do some swivel knife cuts. It takes a little practice the getting used to the swivel knife, but it's really not that uh, complicated of a concept. You're dragging your knife along, making your cuts in the leather. Uh, there's steel blades, there's ceramic blades, there's ruby-tipped blades. I use a ceramic blade. I polish it a lot. People cry that you're not supposed to polish it, but it works better when I do, so I'm going to keep doing it. You guys can not polish yours as much as you want. Now, after I bevel these lines, I'll do this little rub so it takes away some of the sharp edge. Uh, you'll see it better in some of the other clips, like right here. You can see that edge disappearing. Now, if you want to bevel quicker, you can use a stylus. This is not the proper way to do it. I just started doing this on projects that were going to take a lot of time to bevel, especially costume projects, which are almost all my projects. You bevel the line, then you use a beveler to rub it back and forth, and then you bevel it a little more with the stylus. Um, it goes a lot faster, it's easier on your hands, but it's definitely not as deep as when you stamp it with a hammer and the proper beveling stamp. You'll also very rarely see me do it in tight corners. It's almost always long straight lines because it's the easiest to operate that way. Any of the tight corners I'm going to bevel with the stamp. These long edges, occasionally I'll do the stylus. The three parts of the greaves, all the stamping and beveling is pretty straightforward. Lots of long straight lines makes it pretty easy. Now the knees also have a lot of lines. They're all straight and I decided to do something I actually haven't done before, which is to use a ruler when I'm doing my lines on the knees. It worked out really well, so make sure you're using a ruler if you have a lot of straight lines to do, and it will turn out really nice. But I'll let you guys be the judge of that. So we're just gonna transfer our pattern onto the knee, then cut all our lines. As I mentioned earlier, I figured the weight of the leather on the knees was a little light, so I'd at least use a 10 ounce next time, give it a little more bulk. Um, but 
there probably won't be a next time. I love how the ruler gives me the confidence to just do these lines really quick. They all turned out pretty good. There's a lot of beveling involved here, but the effect is great on this waffle type knee. I didn't get to use the styles very much because of all of the tight, short edges, but I did get to use it in a couple spots and it worked good. Make sure you go over your lines a few times. Yeah, looks pretty awesome, I think. And if you were just going to cut the lines, you can see here the difference between the two. Make sure you bevel it. It'll look a lot better. Now that I've been using the term beveling all this time, well, now we're going to actually bevel it. So the other one's a stamp beveler. This is an edge beveler. And we're just cleaning up our edges a bit, front and back. It's a fairly small beveler. I used a number one. I'm going to dye both sides of everything. I'm not really worried about any bleed because it's a caution piece for somebody who's wearing black pants and black everything else. Once everything's dyed and dried, buff it up, and then I'm going to slick the edges a bit. I'm not using anything to help me slick them, just the residual moisture from the dye. I'm just getting them a little slick because I'm going to be painting them, but I don't want to put any wax on the edges or glycerin soap or anything that might stop the paint from adhering really well. Gold takes a while to get looking nice, but just keep at it and eventually you'll get it perfect. After this, I'm going to use a V-gouge. You've seen me use this on a book. It helps you create bends in your leather. So I'm V-gouging the center line of the knee and I'm V-gouging the center line of the front of the greave because both the knee and the front of the greave have a sharp front, like a distinguished obvious crease at the, at the front. Be very careful with the hammer. You don't want to smash it too much, especially if it's dry because you're going to split the leather. If it was wet, it would be a little easier, but just be careful if it's dry. Now I'm going to beeswax and burnish the edges. It does sound a little strange to go over the gold with burnishing, but it worked out nice. The edges turned out really smooth. Buff off any excess on the top and it's looking pretty good. You've got your center line, you've got smooth edges, and you're ready for the next step in the process. These knees have a very, very gradual curve to them, and part of my reasoning behind having a thicker leather for the knee is to enable it to stretch more. So if I was to do these again, I would wet it a bit more, use a thicker leather, and that would give me more of a curve in the knee when I decided to dish it. I mean, you don't really have to dish it, and there's lots of different ways you can do this. If you wet it, you can press it into a bowl, you can hammer it, you can do all sorts of stuff. But because of how shallow that curve actually is, you could probably get away with it being flat if you had to. Now I want to make this leather carving pop a bit better. I've watered down some black paint, I've brushed it on, and then I'm wiping away the excess. I'll do that on all the parts that I painted, and I'll buff it up to make it look nice. Same thing goes for the knees. Do the black paint, wipe it away, and then I'll take both black and gold paint and touch up any mistakes I made earlier. Once I've got all this done, an unnecessary step is this gold pen. It's an old, old, old gold pen, so it didn't work as well as I'd like, but I wanted to clean up the back edge just a little bit, um, make it a little more uniform. So I went over the back edge with that, touched it up. Now I'm going to rough up the tops of this so it's easier to glue. I've skived those little bits there so it's a little more comfortable. I'm using barge. I don't think I'm going to use barge again. It stinks. It's awful for you. I'll just find some better alternative for gluing. Now you just carefully glue your two halves together. And then once you got that done, you may want to give it a little hammer here to make sure that it's all secure. I want to define this leather carving even more, so I'm using this Faber-Castell black brush pen to just make everything pop a bit more. Easy to use and looks great. You could use a small brush to get in there too if you'd like, but this is certainly fast. Everything's looking pretty good so far. So the next phase is me putting Velcro on these greaves. I wouldn't do that again, and I personally got tied up in the idea that they had no straps. If you look at the miniature, the uh, toy figure, they had no straps on them, so I wanted to avoid using straps. But the truth of the matter is, all these super suits on all those shows most of their costumes are glued together single piece. So Jeremy Renner goes to set, he pulls on his pants, and the greaves are already on his pants. Um, I should have ignored that because that's not what we're doing and added some kind of minimalist strapping system. 
Um, but I figured I would leave the footage in just in case it gives you guys ideas on how to do stuff. But I personally wouldn't do it again. I would have done straps or if in the perfect world, maybe riveted them on or glued them on to somebody's pants. Uh, just thought I'd give you guys a heads up. So all I'm doing here is cutting out strips of leather in the appropriate shapes so that I can sew Velcro onto the strips. And then what I'm going to do is take those strips and glue them into the greave. Why glue them? Well, I don't want to have any visible attachments. And on top of that, I want the person that bought these to be able to rip them out and do something else with them if they need to. But I wanted them to work right away. So I want them to be able to be used instantly, even though I think there's a better way of doing it. It seems a little convoluted, but the buyer is in Italy. They can't really ship these back to me. Uh, uh, his English is better than my Italian, but still not great. So just making sure everything was exactly how it needed to be. You know, if I had just mentioned to him what I mentioned to you guys about hero suits being all glued together and saying that I think there needs to be some straps on this piece, he probably would have been fine with it. So that just goes to show you, make sure you just get everything clear before you dive into a project, especially if you're not sure about it. So I was apprehensive about the Velcro and rightly so. It works, but it's not perfect. At least I know with a bit of effort he can take that Velcro out and do some other kind of uh, closure. Now that he's got the pieces, all the hard work is the carving. The super time consuming part is the carving and the patterning. So he's got those pieces perfect with no bonus holes. So I feel like he can take it to somebody or do it himself and get it adjusted if he needs to. So what would I have done differently? Well, I could have either used some black military type clips or button studs. I really like button studs, so that's probably the way I would have gone. They're not very invasive, they're small, um, they look good. And after I think about it for a bit, I may just send him some straps. So, hey Luigi, if you're watching this, I'm probably going to send you some straps. Don't get me wrong, the Velcro worked. It just didn't look how I wanted it to. So, I was pretty rushed on this. I had had my appendix out, excuses, excuses. And the deadline really was, the day I shipped it, if I had waited another day, he probably wouldn't have got it in time for whatever he wanted to do it with, his deadline. And just so you guys know, if you ever want to ship to Italy from North America, Express Post sucks. So we've got Velcro glued in on the front greave and the back greave, and then we've got this spanning piece that goes on both sides. Everything is removable, and it looks pretty good. I'm just not completely happy with it, like I said. I just don't think Velcro is secure enough, so it just wants to pull away, and we'll see how it looks when he's got it all on on his end. You know, I went into this thinking that whole Velcro thing would work on the greaves, but I was pretty sure it wouldn't work on the knees. I did it anyways, but if you're going to do the knees, they need to be mounted to either a knee pad, or the pants, or whatever, or have a strap on them. I wouldn't even, no, they don't, shouldn't even have a strap on them. They need to be mounted to something that's created specifically to be held onto a knee. Um, so either your pants directly glued or riveted, or you could put it on some kind of a sport knee, volleyball knee. I saved the finish for last because of this kind of stuff where I'm hammering. I used a leather bomb finish. It's not necessarily the finish I would use again. I might use an acrylic resiline or maybe an Angelus matte finish, but Leather Bomb does leave it fairly matte, so that's nice if that's the way you want to go. Well, there you have it, everybody. Hopefully you learned something from this build. Remember that you can get the pattern off my Etsy shop or my Patreon for a limited time. And until next time, keep on being creative in whatever it is you do.